billions now over budget and behind schedule. More delays and rising costs for Mississippi Power's Kemper County Lignite plant. Just moments ago, the power company is saying it will be several weeks before the plant is fully operational. A deadline originally set for today. Dave Elliott is live with the latest developments. People flying into Gulfport from Charlotte got a much longer trip than expected today. The American Airlines flight they were on hit a deer, taking off, forcing an emergency landing. After boarding another plane, the passengers were able to make it to South Mississippi tonight a little later than expected, but with an added sense of relief. You see these campers all up and down Highway 90 with people standing out and sitting out in front of them. Of course, the people in these campers have an amazing view of the water and all of those cruisers that are coming by, but with the possibility of a storm moving this way, the concern is growing. Tonight, evacuations underway ahead of Tropical Storm Nate. We just got a new update on Tropical Storm Nate. Our first alert, meteorologists are tracking the storm. As Nate heads towards South Mississippi, residents have started loading up on supplies. We are expecting to stay on with you on live TV and all of our mobile devices, WOLOX.com, throughout the night until the storm passes. Looking at the radar there as Nate continues approaching. This is a fast moving storm. It's really built up very quickly and landfall is expected later tonight. So far what we've seen, we did see a heavy band of rain and wind move through. That's been several hours ago. Within the next couple of hours, we'll start seeing the effects of that storm surge. The water will begin to rise and so the curfews are in effect in Harrison and Jackson County starting at 7 o'clock. And really, sort of what I'm thinking about right now, the next hour, we're going to lose sunlight. So these mm -hmm. pictures that we've seen throughout the day where you get a clear vision of what things look like out there, you see the water levels, about an hour from now, we're just not going to see it because the sun's going to be down. And let's check in with Carrie Duncan right now with the latest on this forecast track for Hurricane Nate. New numbers tonight from Harrison County about the damage left behind by Hurricane Nate. Today we've learned the city of Gulfport is reporting $500,000 of destruction. Emergency Management Director Rupert Lacey says the estimates in the county are now greater than the $4.5 million required to receive federal assistance. And just after 2 o'clock this afternoon, a bus carrying around 50 people was trying to cross Main Street in Biloxi when a train collided with it. The train carried that bus several hundred yards. I counted three full blocks down to where the bus finally came to a stop. And Christina, as you said, we have confirmed tonight three people are dead as a result of the train hitting the charter bus. WLOX reporter Victor Williams was first on the scene right after we learned about this all happening just after two o'clock. Victor, when you got here this afternoon, what was it like? If they're moving the bus right now, I'm going to stay here and and let the bus pass so you can see the full impact of how significant that damage was on the bus. This bus was stuck on the tracks after the collision for about three hours before it was removed. And that is the point of impact and you can really tell how difficult of a situation that was and tragic it was when it happened. The bus had been stuck on the tracks for several minutes before it was hit. And we're going to continue our team coverage right now. Michelle Masson is reporting from a local hospital. She's around the corner from here at Merritt, where some of the people who were involved in the accident were taken. Michelle? Well, an estimated 2,500 vehicles cross these tracks at Main Street every day. So we're looking into exactly what is the procedure for large vehicles to take when crossing the tracks. Carrie Grace spoke with a charter bus driver about their training, plus what the city of Biloxi plans to do now. News conference just wrapped up here in Biloxi with the NTSB. And with me right now from the NTSB is Robert Zumwalt. Thank you for joining us. And in the news conference, you went over a few details that I felt were alarming details. Diamond Tours had set up the directions for this bus that went over the tracks, and they had also given directions to two other other buses and the bus appeared not to follow those directions. Is that correct? No. When a fifth grader at Jeff Davis Elementary found out some of her fellow students wouldn't be able to go on a field trip, she decided to step in.
Then there's manual distraction, taking your hands off the wheel that can be eating or of course using your cell phone. And by the way, the phone can create all three types of distractions and however you define distracted driving, it's happening all around us. We are feeling the chill tonight. The rain and cold could create a nasty mix for drivers later this week. Do you cross a bridge on your drive? Chances are you do. Take a look at this map marking bridges on major roads. All of those bridges and overpasses are why officials in Harrison County are working to keep the roads as safe as possible. Tonight, a two year old child is safe after missing for at least six hours. William Odom lives right here on Pete Hickman Road in this area. This is the Biloxi River. He was found a quarter of a mile away in a truck across the Biloxi River. Two men walked into the first bank here on the corner of Klondike and Pineville in Long Beach just before noon today. They had guns and demanded money. The train behind me is still stopped on the tracks. It's been stopped here for now more than two hours as this train collided with a car right here on Magnolia Street just before 8 o'clock tonight. New developments in the Mississippi Aquarium construction this week. A $35 million bond passed unanimously by the Gulfport City Council to keep the target finish date on schedule. The active search called off just minutes ago after troopers were not able to find the suspect. Ten finalists took the stage here, but only two winners could prevail and move to the front of the line for the American Idol competition. Fall on the way finally, uh, and finally. really overnight tonight it's going to feel better. The Mississippi Civil Rights Museum is destined to be one of the most powerful statements about the civil rights movement in the nation. The party of the century is now less than 48 hours from kicking off, and the setup is in full swing, transforming Centennial Plaza into a showcase for all things Mississippi. And you can get a closer look at this map on the WLOX News Now app. If you don't have the app, download it right now so you can have the map with you at the bicentennial celebration. No one was injured when a car caught fire on the side of the interstate this evening. Gulfport police tell us several agencies responded to this vehicle fire at exit 34 and I 10. Crews were able to extinguish the flames at this time. The cause of the fire is under investigation. There's still a lot we don't know about what led to the accident, but we do know that seven people were crammed into the 2003 Kia Optima, a vehicle that only seats five. In the front driver's seat, you see it right there, the suspect, Jesse Dickerson, sitting next to him in the passenger seat, 16-year-old Spencer Havert, who died at the scene. A lot could change as we've seen in the past Absolutely. with these storms, especially over the next few days leading into the weekend. Still a lot to happen. All right, cruising the coast is in full swing. All kinds of cars are out there, including the Batmobile, and you could buy it, the original car up for grabs at a big auction at cruising the coast.